2011 is the year I closed on my house here. That's the first year we had a, a pretty good sized earthquake. Uh, rattling experience, my first. August 22nd, 2011. A magnitude 5.3 earthquake shakes the Purgatory River Valley west of Trinidad, crumbling building facades and rattling store shelves in the small towns of Valdez and Segundo, Colorado's strongest trembler in 45 years. Shook me good. Broke all the neighbor's dishes. Broke the front of the building. Broke the building down the street all the way out into the streets. That earthquake, just one of dozens to rattle the Raton Basin over the past 20 years. A time frame that precisely coincides with the beginning of coal bed methane extraction from southern Huerfano County all the way into northern New Mexico. The earthquake activity has increased by 30, 40 fold. The National Earthquake Center at the U.S. Geological Survey in Golden tracks and measures earthquakes all across the globe. Each year we've seen at least one magnitude 4 earthquake in those within that area that we've depicted on these maps. USGS researchers have spent years studying whether mining activity in the area is responsible for all the earthquakes. Nearly 3,000 well sites are scattered all across the hillsides over thousands of acres, pulling water and methane gas from underground coal seams. The methane heads into pipelines to help heat homes and businesses while the water is separated and stored. It can't be released back on the surface, so it's sent back underground, roughly a mile or more in nearly 30 injection wells. What we do know is that, that we're seeing a lot of earthquakes in a small area that seem to be very correlated with the uh, area of wastewater injection. Researchers at CU Boulder published findings in October of a study into whether wastewater injection is causing Southern Colorado earthquakes. What we found was that injection of wastewater uh, that has actually occurred in the Raton Basin the pressures that it causes underground are large enough to indu induce the earthquakes or to cause the earthquakes that we actually see. Dr. Jenny Nakai says the injected wastewater increases pressure on natural fault lines, pushing the bedrock apart. And when you have that decrease in stress, that allows the fault to slip. And then you can have earthquakes. It's like lubricating, but really it's a pressure effect. So it's really pushing the fault apart. And so you can imagine if you have, if you're pushing your hands together, you can feel that friction, but as you lighten it and pull them apart, then you're getting much more, it's much easier for it to rupture. The result, earthquakes shaking Trinidad and surrounding areas. I've learned to come accustomed to it, at least we're not in Hawaii. Johnny Servo manages the general store in Segundo. A majority of his customers and many of the residents of this part of the state work in the coal bed methane industry, most for Pioneer Natural Resources. The activity had completely slowed down uh, when the economy went bad and, and oil and gas were, uh, the price on oil and gas declined so bad. The recession from a decade ago took hundreds of industry jobs, shuttering a mine near Weston and slowing methane production to a crawl. Coal bed methane gas production in Los Animas County is uh, quite certain the largest uh, income moneymaker for the county and also for the citizens. Probably 90% of our budget was funded through oil and gas at one time. While production has slowed, the earthquakes have continued. Many in the region say it's worth the risk for one of the only steady jobs around. I believe it's worth dealing with. The earthquakes aren't, definitely aren't any reason to uh, stop or slow down the production down here. And researchers say the quakes will continue. Even if you shut off the wastewater injection, there's no way to stop the natural movements of the earth and you don't know how how long that pressure will take to dissipate. 